Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I know the weather is excited to have you back. Oh my goodness. We're I'm excited not sure to have I'm you excited back too. excited about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on Wake Up West Texas. Like Joe said, I am back. Yes, I'm happy back. to be back. How are you doing? Good. I, and it's, it's been a while. It's been like two I know. weeks. Did I miss anything? Hot weather. Hot weather. <laughs> I'm glad I missed that. For a, a long time, yeah. It's like 107 when you were gone. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. I'm not. I'm glad I didn't. I wasn't here for that. But I came back and it was really hot. Yeah. I'm not used. How was to it where we where you were at? I went to Alaska, so it was like 70s. 70s. Okay. <laughs> it was nice wow, and cool. Wow, it's like winter. Cool. <laughs> yep. It was nice and cool. But uh, it is Tuesday, August 20th. Yes. 2019, and I'm Camille Riquiestas. The progress isn't Lake Bingo, but I'm Camille Riquiestas. He's somewhere around here, right? <laughs> we'll find him later. And I'm Joe DiCarlo. Uh, thank you for waking up with us this morning. A little shout out to my mother. It was her birthday yesterday. I was supposed happy to be birthday. here yesterday, but uh, I didn't get to say it. So, belated happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say it? You didn't call her? Oh, I called her, but okay. I wanted to say it on okay, TV. Good. I think it's more happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a National Bacon Lovers Day. I know you're not a no, bacon lover, so this is not that. your day. But maybe you like mm. lemonade because it's National Do Lemonade love Day. love lemonade. Yeah, lemonade's good. And a National Chocolate Pecan Pie Day, also World Mosquito Day. Oh, yeah. Celebrate is, the mosquitoes. I, mean, I heard you got bit, right? Yeah, I have like 15 bites on me. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, grab your cup of coffee because we're going to get started on some of your morning news. First up, all Comanche ISD schools will be closed today due to a break in a 16-inch water line. As of now, school will resume on Wednesday. Should those plans change, CISD will provide updates via Facebook and School Messenger. A scary situation at a Walgreen in Abilene late last week after police say a man threatened to bomb the store. Police say 58-year-old Richard Lawrence Chapman, who was a frequent customer, walked into Walgreens Friday and passed the note to the sales clerk. The note read, quote, bank robbery 10 seconds bomb positioned when the clerk couldn't read the note chapman said quote you're being robbed chapman left with 280 dollars before police found him in a different outfit he's charged with first degree aggravated robbery his bond is set at seventy-five thousand dollars and Snyder residents are in disbelief after visiting the place where they laid their loved ones to rest. Over the weekend, the president of the Cemetery Association authorized a cleanup without giving notice to those who own plots. Troy Botts wanted to get, get rid of the trash on the grounds and plastic flowers, which are against code. Residents are claiming that during the cleanup, their graves and sentimental property were damaged in the process. A community discussion was held between Botts and the deed owners, but it did not end with a clear solution. The damage is already done, but for him to not want to apologize, I mean, given a sincere apology, but if he could come out here and help us fix what he, the damage he's done would be very, you know, we would accept that. Residents are still unclear of what solutions will happen at Snyder Cemetery moving forward. Although the issues at the Texas border seem far away from West Texas, it's starting to hit closer to home with talks about an ICE detention center. That's right, Nevada Vera has all the details. The Jones County Secure Treatment Facility was built over nine years ago, but never opened its doors. And now the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is proposing to use it as a detention center. This time I'm going to convene the board meeting also of the Texas Midwest Public Facility Corporation, the members of that board are myself. The Jones County Commissioners called for a meeting Monday morning to discuss and take action on the Texas Midwest Jones County Detention Facility. According to the Jones County judge, it was built in 2010 with a request from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for an intermediate sanction facility, costing over $35 million for $470,000. Judge Spurgeon said those were bonds that were sold to private investors about a week after construction was finished. They called and they said they weren't going to use it. Since then, the facility has remained vacant. An executive session broke out for an hour and a half to discuss ICE's proposal. An agreement to house a minimum of 750 up to 1,000 male uh, detainees. Other improvements within the facility would also be part of the agreement between ICE and the county. The facility would offer employment to over 200 people. A public hearing was opened, which included two local pastors with their concerns. Would we have opportunity to come in? Uh, I know that we've had access to, to jails and, and to other situations, and I've appreciated that and I've participated in that. We would like to continue to be able to minister if we can. 
The timing of the project would be to have it opened 90 days from the date that the Commissioner's Court approves the proposed contract, which is expected to be completed by sometime this week. The Operator Management Trading Corporation is uh, putting the final uh, touches on that intergovernmental services agreement as well as finalizing the operation and management agreement between the county uh, and, uh, and MTC. No agreement was reached by the Commissioner's Court Monday morning, but they will resume next week. Reporting for Fox West Texas, I'm Nate Rivera. The amount of time we spend binge watching has skyrocketed, especially for teens and young children. Armando Dominguez, the lead health assessor for MHMR, tells us that while serial programming research is new, we can already see short-term effects such as compulsive behavior, health issues, sleep disruption, and a technology dependence. Due to a study looking at people's reaction to the TV show, 13 Reasons Why, we know that the type of content binge watch can leave a lasting influence. There's going to be a rush. Sometimes that payoff is that emotional load, and sometimes when people watch stuff, they go in there with a sense of, I want to be moved. Dominguez recommends monitoring the content your kids watch and the time spent in front of the screen. And we'll have more on uh, this story later on the show from our Sydney Timmer. Yes, we will. But uh, I guess, can you give us a little tease on weather? <laughs> it's going to be hot. It's not going to be. It's moderation a little bit. It's coming down a, a few degrees. Okay. <laughs> it's still going to be hot. Great. Like when you Great. left, you're like, oh, triple digit. We've had 24 consecutive days. Well, today will be our 24th day in a row above 100. So it's not going to be 107, but it'll be around 100. So okay. it's going to be hot. So he'll give us a little, uh, <laughs> little more information <laughs> more on, good news. on the weather right after this break. We'll also have those details on the health effects of binge watching. Time right now is 6.06. Stick with us.